Test, test, test. Yo, yo, yo. Hello, 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 hello. What's up, what's up? Oh. Watch this. Yo, Brandon, thank you, buddy. Thank you, sir. Is it not auto switching? Ah, oh, here we go. All right, I'm just gonna leave it like this. Okay, so we got a camera here. It says it's only doing 20 frames a second, weird. And now we got a camera here. Why is it that, let me fix the audio here. There, we wanna keep this audio on even though that one is cleaner. So I got a GoPro here, it's all in auto. Don't worry about the picture quality or anything like that, all right? We know they look different. Um, this is a test, so I apologize for the, I don't know, it's not a bike stream, sorry. Um, but what I'm gonna do is show you what I'm doing as well as, uh, just so you can see what I'm up to for this weekend's 24 hour stream. It is not clickbait. I'm gonna plug this camera in carefully. This battery on this camera doesn't last very long, so I can only do this for a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna plug in this Sony, um, and put it over here. Wait for the camera to switch. So I'm gonna put it, hello, there we go. This camera here, it's an RX-02. Uh, so it's automatically doing camera switches. I should have given you guys an idea what's going on. Um, I have two cameras by them, like next to each other. I'm gonna move this one up. So you can see the uh, a little more BTS. See, so I got the yellow box right here, and I have my Oz, Osmo Osbot thing that I use that tracks me around the studio right here. Check it out. So I'm going to turn this on now. Um, you see the screen's on. I also have. I have it plugged in to my A10 Mini. So I'm using the, I need a wider shot. <laughs> so I'm gonna be using the, let me turn the camera switcher off real quick. There we go. Okay. I'm using the, I'm gonna be using the, there we go. I'm gonna be using the um, Yolo Box Mini. I just figured out how to finally get it working with USB and HDMI. The way that it works, the, why, the reason why I was very excited to use it in the past, I'll do it real quick and show you, is that it has picture in picture built in. Right? I'm just gonna quickly do this real quick. There we go. Boom, you see? So I have both cameras now on screen, right? Check this out. Because we have picture in picture, now what I'm gonna try to attempt to do for this weekend stream, because I'm not gonna be on the road with the guys the whole time. I'm gonna follow them out. That's the idea right now anyways, is to follow them out until the mountains like I said, there's probably not going to be reception um, in the mountains, so we'll probably have to be like a low bitrate kind of ordeal for like 
I would imagine like 30 minutes to an hour. These guys are pretty fast. They're trying to do the fastest known time from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, right? So, I'll let this go off real quick. Thank you for the, thank you for the sub, Justin. So what I'm trying to do is flip Flip the entertainment value a little bit and make it more engaging. And because I'm not gonna be with them the whole time and I don't expect them to want to wear a camera bag, the, you know, the POV bag, um, and it's so if they had the camera, you know, it, it would be kind of weird if I wasn't talking, as well as I don't know how comfortable they're going to be reading and responding to you guys. So, this, these are the reasons for all this stuff. Um, the picture in picture is hopefully going to alleviate that. So, once we meet up with them again, we're going to be on a lot of like in between big cities, gravel kind of dirt roads. Hope. I, I got the map, I'm checking it out. There's a lot of like side and back roads. It's not the th most fastest direct way from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. It's a little bit more scenic, but they're trying to uh, beat the fastest known time. Uh, these boys, just two of them just came back from a race in the bat called the Badlands in Spain. Uh, they're, they're pretty f uh, in shape, pretty fit right now. They ride, concept team, they ride for Cervelo. Um, these guys, um, they're gonna drop me. <laughs> the reason for the support cars, there's no way I can carry the stream bag, even with an e-bike, for the whole 360 miles or whatever they're gonna do, straight with no stops, right? I mean, they might stop for water and food, obviously, but they're not going to take a break. They're going to go straight there, and we're going to try and stream the whole thing. So, the reason why I'm very hyped and trying to get this to work and why I'm testing with you guys now is because there's a few reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing. First of all, picture in picture. The Yolo box has picture in picture, and it's amazing. As you can see, it's working great. This camera here, this guy right here, the little box, the picture in picture, the little guy, I want to put this in the rear view, in the car. We'll just, I'm saying the rear view mirror, but somewhere in the car, right? And I want to have this as a camera in the car. So once I get in the car and I'm operating the camera switching and these guys are on the road, I can still engage with chat. You guys can still see me. So um, that's the reason why the uh, picture in picture I think is going to be great. I can do, but that's what I'm trying to do right now. So now the reason between the uh, the reason why I'm bringing switch to this camera. <laughs> this is going to trip you out. So, let me turn this off. You can see what I'm doing here, right? So I'm gonna turn off picture in picture. There. Larry, get the hell, Larry! Fly boy. Yo, that was a young, that kid was hella young driving. Did you see that? There's some like eight year old. Dude, what the fuck? Barely see over the steering wheel. Uh, that was wild. Someone look, someone go back and check that. That little kid was small. Put it in slow mo. Put whatever this thing outputs goes into the box, the Yolo box, and then the Yolo box can do all of the other magic. Right? The reason why this is amazing, not only for the double cameras, is this right here. It has two 
mic inputs. Now, remember when we were on tour and I was riding across the country, most of the time it was fine, I only had two mics, right? But sometimes there were three of us, right? So like, Alex, you couldn't hear Alex talking when Alex was with Sean and I, because there was only one way to plug in two mics with this. Well, I have two mic inputs on the A10 Mini. So what I can do now is I can plug in two, I have two here for the test. I can plug in two different units. I also have Eric in the other room with the mic right now. So I'm gonna unplug this cause I don't have a, uh, <laughs> I'm missing, uh, I'm missing two of these cables right now. The other one's at my house, this red cable. It's just a regular 3.5 millimeter jack, unfortunately. So we can't do a solid test. I'm gonna unplug this mic here, or this receiver, and, and plug in this receiver. And then I'm gonna ask Eric to say something. We'll see if we can hear him. Test, test, test. Oh, 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 shit. Let me change the audio levels here. Eric's watching us in the other room. I can hear him. Eric, say something. Hey, hey, what's up? It's me. Hey, we're live, there he goes. Uh -oh. live from the other studio. Um, just testing out the microphone. What up? Uh oh. Okay. Say it again, Eric. I'm right here. Um, oh, there he is. Let me back up. Let me back up. Hey, everyone. We're live. It's Wednesday. It's, it is I. We're here on the other side of the studio, talking back, talking to y'all. What up, chat? You're. Yeah, for some reason, it's only doing uh, 13 frames a second right now, unfortunately. Um, I should try and connect this to uh, the local Wi-Fi here instead of using my Sims. I see that we've dropped a lot of frames. <laughs> Anyways, Eric's there. Did it work? And I, I realized, yeah, I can hear you, sorry. Thank you. Yeah. This is the old... This is the old... Um, Rode Wireless Go that I brought on tour with me and yeah, it's still having issues with the connection on the inside. So I, I'm probably going to have to buy another one, unfortunately, to make this work. Let me see here. Let me set, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, oh man, that's not going to work. Let me see if I can uh, sign into our uh, regular internet. Chat. What do you guys think? Get your bikes, just let it Woo! Get your bike, no brakes! Yeah! 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 Yeah!
I'm coming. I'm in the draft. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> oh, there's the thing. Watch out for the thing. Uh -oh. I'm going left. I'm going left. <laughs> yeah! Bring a little excitement back to the chat. He All right, we'll see if this works. I had to uh, connect to my internet here at the studio. It looks like it's throwing up 8,000 kilobits a second. Here at the studio. There we go. Looks a little bit better. Let's see what happens when I uh, change this switch. We'll do this like every every one minute, maybe. Let me check. Let me go check on the computer over here. Looks better now? Does it look better or is it still stuttering? Less lag looks good. Yeah, so you guys, the connection, I'm in a fucking, you know, a warehouse like building. So cell phone connection, SIM cards and all that, they don't work very good in here. That's just the nature of not living in the suburbs like all you peons. No. <laughs> uh, still stuttering, huh? Interesting. What's it look like now? Sound is stable. Well, yeah, the sound before was tr fucking trash. This thing is clapped out. This, whoa, it's like really following this. This is kind of cool. <laughs> uh. You're the peon for using Wi-Fi. <laughs> uh, I'm using two SIMs and Wi-Fi, buddy. That's how it works. It's called bonding, bruh. I have a wireless, a wired connection right here, actually, sir. Here, let me show you. Let's wait for the camera to swab. Look at here, sir. What's that? That's an Ethernet cable. You fucking asshole! <laughs> uh, one thing that's cool is uh, it's not um, there's not a lot of lag in the audio I don't know how they do that so this is one mic I have this other mic right here I'm going to turn it on now you hear that guy uh, that mic is oh, let's turn this camera on 
That mic is this mic right here. Turn on, buddy. Come on. There it goes. This mic right here. Um, another thing that's cool about this whole setup. Oh, we still have, even with picture in picture, what do you mean? No, it's not sending. It's not sending two at the same time. I'll put that back on. I'll do the picture in picture again. We'll test that again because I really want that to work. There we go. Disable. There we go. Let's see if this drops. This isn't sending two video signals. I don't believe that's how it works. That's a good guess. Uh, but I f my guess is the um, YOLO box is taking the signals and then outputting the one video. <laughs> you like that little mic? It's just the one I had laying around. That's what it looks like on two screens if someone drinks water. Um, so as a backup, which I don't want to do, but the tried and true live view, the tried and true live view, I wish I could bring a light in here. The GoPro just, GoPro's not very good. This, um, Hopefully it will look a lot better when I have an FX3 plugged into one of these. But the way to hook this up is the YOLO box also has a monitor mode. And this would be the safest way to do this stream is it has an HDMI out of this device here. And I can output it straight into here. I have the hiccup, sorry. Um, the YOLO box is, uh, I think it's just a strong thing to have to bring on the trip because I can monitor what shot I'm seeing. Uh, I can monitor the audio going in and out. So I want to just stream with the device, but I don't know, I've never done a full 24 hour stream with it. So I might bring, or I am gonna bring the live view anyways. I should probably just stream with the live view just to keep it nice and safe, really. But it's so much nicer when there's less gear. Yes, the ATM, the ATEM is running on batteries. Yes, sir, I'll show you. It's pretty sick that it works like this. You're giving up all my secrets, Matthew B. I wasn't ready to tell the public. I figured this out when you were here. So there's the ATEM mini power plug and it's running in to this battery right here. So this whole operation, I have nothing plugged into the wall, nothing at all. It's all happening here and the cool thing about this like camera switcher is that i can always have remember this little screen right here this one this this camera it's gonna be in the car and that's only gonna be turned on you when i'm in the car so um that's the idea that's my idea i wanted to test it uh, and run it by you guys so you guys can see uh, thank you for the help with the troubleshooting, for sure. That was an issue, for sure. <laughs> now I know, for, I know for a damn fact that I can't use this transmitter or this receiver. Um, so I'm not even going to try to bring this. That sucks, because now i got to go buy another one. I am tired of buying these things. Oh, well. Um, another thing is the microphones, as you know, die after six hours, and this is a, uh, 
a 24-hour stream, so I don't know exactly uh, how I'm going to work around that quite yet. Uh-oh. The YOLO box needs to be plugged into power. Yeah, the colors are a lot different. Of course, I'm using three different cameras. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, think of this. All of this stuff that I just showed you, I could put this, although I wouldn't want to, I could put this all on a bicycle, all of it. It's all running off of batteries. It's fucking insane, if you think about it. I could do some really strange streams. When would I need a camera or a stream with like four or five different cameras? Well, maybe at Thursday night social ride. That would be a great time to have all these different cameras, right? Also, this, this thing's still on. <laughs> Turn on, sir. Also, this, uh, oh, this is what I need to get used to here. There we go. This box here has two more inputs. And remember, one of the inputs is gonna be a wireless HDMI signal. Hopefully, to this backpack here. So this bag is really getting lightweight. All it needs is a GoPro, a battery, and a wireless transmitter. That is fucking it. That's it. It's amazing. It's amazing. Now I just gotta talk one of the guys to wearing the bag. <laughs> I hope I can get one of them to wear the bag. It would be sick. Um, what else should I test here? I don't have, unfortunately I don't have my transmitters here, which kind of is a bummer. Um, so I can't, test the wireless transmission, but you guys know, you guys know that um, I got to plug this in real quick. Hold on. You guys know that this, uh, the wireless transmitter already works because I already used it. I used it at Mission Crit. If you guys were there for Mission Crit, you might remember when there was a POV. There was a POV of the race. That was wirelessly transmitted from the bag to, ah, I'm dropping everything. There we go. I was trying to find something to put that on. There we go. The thing is, Sean needs a uh, Sean needs a quad lock in the app, which is fine. He'll be able to have that. Um, I can I can set him up all that stuff. You think he'll be a good talker? That's good. Um, another thing I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to change the output to 720. Um, like I did for the tour. Unfortunately, there's just going to be areas where cell service is going to be not as good. So, got to do that. Got to got to make sure that that's an option. Um, yeah, if I can get dude, if Sean would wear the bag in the beginning, that would be pretty sick. Like he's just wearing the bag. That's it. You know. You guys gotta uh, be easy on them though, because they're not used to talking to chat. You know what I mean? And also, 
because it's a 24 hour stream and I'm normally streaming in, uh, is this not charging? Yeah, it is. Okay. Since I'm normally streaming, you know, between 12 and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that's a, that's a 5 p.m. Los Angeles time by the time I normally sign out. They're starting their journey to Las Vegas at nighttime. So it's going to be, you know, the start of their ride. A lot of you aren't even going to be awake. You know what I mean? It's going to be different viewing times. But because it's 24 hours, when you wake up and when Europe, Asia, I guess, wakes up, we will be online already. And hopefully, you could see them crossing to Vegas at the end. I honestly think out of the whole journey, leaving LA is probably the least important to see anyways. What uh, wireless HDMI setup do I have? I have the Hollyland Magic, the 400S. It's, I, it's, I got it for work. It's uh, the SDI and HDMI. There are cheaper options out there though. You don't need that one. Man, Sushi Dragon is like a million steps away because he has, he's working with PCs and he's got so many cool wireless activation things like buttons and stuff pretty cool i don't know if i can do that on a bike yeah the holly lands are pretty good they're pretty good yeah he's got a shitload of macros Yeah, real time, real time editing. Yeah, he's got those fucking gloves, it's so cool. Uh, but because the nature of his streams and my streams, I watched when he was in New York, when I was on tour, I saw him. He was here for like a couple days. His streams to operate them are so complicated he, it just looked a little like, he looked a little robotic in New York City, do you know what I mean? They weren't doing a lot of action. It was all graphics. So there's no way I'd be able to ride a bike and do that type of shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> he's the pro doing all this shit and he's like this. Imagine if he had to do that stuff riding a bike. I'm sure there's a way to do it. It's a little, yeah, it's a little tiny clunky. He's way smoother in his studio space, 100%. He's fucking good. I love what he does. It's no, um, that wasn't a uh, critique against him. Or maybe it was a critique. But it wasn't, I'm not trying to be negative. I look up to that guy. He does cool shit. <clears throat> Okay, what do we do now? We just have this webcam looking like shit. I wish I can get it to... It won't follow me anymore. It's being very stupid. Uh, one thing that I found out with the webcam thing is that it doesn't like to... Um, it doesn't really like to turn on. It really has issues with it. And right now it seems like it's loose. Like, hello. Like it'll zoom. Zoom. But it won't lock onto my head. It's supposed to, but it's not doing it. Whatever. 
Don't really need that for the car, right? Not really, not really something I need. There we go, this works much better. Let's go back to switching here. Uh, we'll do a switch. I'm at, so I'm gonna go back to riding a bike and using the Yolo box and a webcam and a regular camera, right? By the way, I have tried using an HDMI converter for this setup, it doesn't work. It doesn't work for some reason. I've used two different kinds, USB to HDMI. It's not really working for me. Okay, I'm gonna put these on auto switch. I'll put this one back here. Maybe I'll bring this one. It's too far away. Maybe we'll put this here so you can see it. Something like that, like a nice wider view. So the stream, excuse me. <laughs> so the stream is on Sunday, Sunday night. Which cam is what, this one? Uh, that's Eric's bike. It's a Surly. So this camera right here is the Ozbot sitting on a live view. <laughs> and that's what I'm looking at. We have the chat here and those are all the connections. Um, and this is the A10 Mini and the GoPro over there. And I'll switch the GoPro now and this is the Sony RX0. Don't mind the colors and the exposures like someone said earlier. Um, they're different cameras and they're set up at different exposures right now, so. They're gonna look different. Unfortunately, it's gonna look different. I can go through and obviously try to fix things, but. Um, there's ways around it I could just use I have two GoPro um, 10s. I can use two GoPro 10s. That's a 50K max out. Um, yes, it is. It's uh, 50,000 milliamp hours. So it's 185 watt, or 180, 185 watt hours. I speak in watt hours because of, uh, you know, V-mount and gold mount batteries, but yeah. Totally, you're right. Uh, this is a Verizon <laughs> modem that I use with the Live View. Um, another cool thing about the, uh, let's swap back to this guy. Another cool thing about the YOLO box is it has everything in it built in. It's touch, I can disable this. It's got an audio mixer built in. I can turn, in, turn on the USB audio, which sounds better. Test. See? This is the audio from the uh, OBS bot, which sounds cleaner because it has. Um, got it, dude. Shut up. It sounds cleaner because it has. Um, what is it called? Like, I have an AC on, so it's got like a low pass, high pass filter on it. I mean. Um, I can also do overlays. Um, I can invite guests, which I haven't done yet. 
I don't know how this works. We should try to invite somebody one day. Well, I didn't mean better than the Rhodes. I meant um, better than, like, if I was to use this camera's audio. Like, I'll turn it on right now. And turn this off. Test, test. Actually, this doesn't sound too bad. See? I can turn on all, any camera, turn this off. Any camera that's plugged in to the A10 Mini, I can turn on or off its audio here. Um, that's the way it works. So, I also have another picture in picture. You see that? I can do multiple picture in pictures. <laughs> Not gonna do that though. I'm pretty clean, dude. Don't lie. Don't lie. I'm pretty clean up there. Let's see. I really like the camera switcher though. That's what I was gonna talk about, I forgot. So imagine, check this out. Imagine if I had the regular camera set like this, right? This guy right here, the backpack. <laughs> and then on my head, I had this camera right here, on my helmet. This one right here, right? It's got a gimbal on it. Probably stays pretty smooth, who knows? I have no idea. Check it out. And I had this auto switching capability while I'm on my bike riding. One on my head, one on my chest. It'd be kind of cool. It would be uh, a pretty smooth way of um, doing camera switching and it just switches every minute. Or what if I had one pointing backwards and one pointing forwards from my chest? It would be, uh, it'd be pretty, pretty nice. I don't know, you should check it out. One of these days. One of these days we'll set all that up. Maybe when we come back from this, uh, this LA trip. Yeah, rear view camera, that would be sweet. Um, let me see. Also the GoPro is supposed to have like a USB mode. And I don't know how to get the GoPro into USB mode working without the app. You need to download an app. And unfortunately, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. Does anyone know? Anyone have any ideas on how to turn the GoPro into a webcam through USB? You usually just plug it right in, right? But it makes you download some app. So I need to have this app on this device, which is Android based, but there isn't an app for this thing. I can't find one anyways. You can't use the cam link. It doesn't work. There's no cam link on this setup, by the way. Dimitri came in here super late. <laughs> God damn it, Dimitri. I think there's a way, I researched it early in the pandemic for work webinars. I mean, there's a way, they have an app. Um, 
You have to download something on your computer before your computer will recognize it. But because this isn't technically a computer, I don't know how to make it work. It's basically just an Android-based tablet. Windows app? Huh. Maybe. <laughs> Download Windows. God damn it. Dimitri, I'm very upset with you for being so late. I'm going to have to give this gold star to someone else. There's an Android app that can do it on a phone. What app is that called? What app is that? Hmm. It's the GoPro quick. <laughs> All right, I'm going to see if I can slide this up and the stream doesn't die. It might die, though. Or it won't die. It'll go to, like, ingest, ingest offline or something. Maybe it's still working. That's cool. I guess it never went anywhere. The quick app. Okay. So what I'll try to do is I got to download the quick app for Android and send it to my Google Drive and then open up my Google Drive from the YOLO box and then download it to the YOLO box because <laughs> I don't have the, uh, what do you call it, the way to download apps. I do have the SK, S, SKD or SDK drawer, I guess. And I really wish I had the wireless camera right now because I can take you into the other room with me. It's a bummer. Hmm. There's a webcam app for Windows or Mac. No clue how to get on your YOLO. Yeah, but what's Windows? I'm like I said, I'm on a I'm on an Android base. I'm not on Windows. So I'd use the Android. Hmm. I would use the phone app. Right? I would use the phone app, the Android phone app. Are you sure, Matthew B., that's the one? The quick app? Let me see. GoPro webcam on phone. <laughs> uh, first install the GoPro app. It's available for iOS and Android. Sounds right. Sounds, sounds right, Matthew B. Now connect your Hero 7 or later to a network. If you don't have a network, you'll need blah, 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 blah. Oh, this is live streaming. I'm not trying to live stream. GoPro.
Hmm. Is it? Okay, I have a way to test that. I have the quick app right here. Let's see if it works on a phone. Cause I have a, I have a USB to lightning cable right here. Let's see if this works. Let's see if this works live. I don't know if this battery is charged though. Let me see. It is. Okay, so let's take this off. <laughs> Why does it say it's linear mode? Weird. All right. So I'm going to plug USB-C into here. Let's see what happens. Uh, hmm. It doesn't work. <laughs> uh, fuck. It might just be a... It could just be a Mac thing. You know what I mean? I would, I would assume. It's also, oh, no. Maybe I turn off Bluetooth on it. BLE is off on this device. BLEs, oh, that's Bluetooth. Yeah, I'm sorry, it doesn't work, guys. It doesn't work. There's another feature I wanted to talk about with the Yolo Box. This is just all about the Yolo Box, guys. I'm sorry. Can't tell that I'm hyped about it. It's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to bring some more light in here so the GoPro looks better. Hold on. <clears throat> Just uh, roll this big, huge light around, blast it off this wall here. It might not look better. <sighs> I need to, I need to sit over there is where I need to sit and then it'll look better. I could just rotate the whole table around. That'll be funny. That's that's a lot easier. I'm moving all this stuff. Oh, there we go. That's pretty nice. Just keep it sloppy. Let's just keep it sloppy. Depending on your... There we go. My seven is just a brick when I plug it into my computer. Need the webcam app, but not a thing for iOS or Android. All the tutorials I see are for Mac or Windows. Yeah, me too. Yeah, the, the cam link or any HDMI converter, it doesn't work with the Yolo box, at least right now. I don't know. That's a good search. Can we get our internet minds together and figure this out? Um, Yolo box with cam link. Yeah, see?
It doesn't really... Oh wait, here's something. Use the iPhone as a webcam with your YOLO box. That's kind of cool. How do you do that? How do you think it would do that? Chat, I'm talking to you. Maybe we'll zoom this one in. <laughs> See, look at the GoPro still doesn't quite look that good, but it looks a lot better than it did. See, we're romping now. Got the bit rates. Oh yeah, I, I can't figure it out. So whatever, I'm gonna use this. <laughs> yes, this one. <laughs> What's up? This help? What is this? Let's see. Maybe I open this in the other chat. Let's see. No, because this one is an older, this is an older one. It's the GoPro, GoPro 5. Let's see. Is he talking? Oh, he is talking. No video, yeah. No video. Okay, I change you another cable. I <laughs> change another cable. No video. Turn off the power. Turn off the power. And then turn on again. No video. <laughs> this is a Fable HDMI to HDMI convert. It can let the any HDMI cover the normal HDMI box. Okay, so I want to let the Canada GoPro Hero 5. This is input. This is output. Okay. Yeah. Input source is GoPro Hero 5. Video. Okay, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I need to try turning it off and on. So we're probably gonna lose the webcam here. I'm gonna just unplug it now. There we go. We're also losing power on the, uh, the uh, YOLO box. I didn't plug it in early enough. Let me see. Hopefully it won't die, but it's on 2% battery. So I'm gonna get the little cam link that you guys have already mentioned. Maybe it'll work now, because we're talking about it, but it didn't work before. So I have two capture cards, or capture cards. They're uh, converters. They are HDMI to USB converters, okay? And we're gonna try them out. Hopefully before the battery on the YOLO box dies. Okay, so check it out. Look at that. It's a cam link. US or HDMI to USB, okay? I won't even use an adapter. I'm just gonna plug it right into the top. I won't even use an extender. We'll plug this right into there. Take this guy. Let's see. 
It'd be cool if it started working. I mean, I want it to work, so. There we go. Turning it on. So it's not reading any HDMI coming in, nothing. Like it did before. It's not, nothing's showing up. I don't, I don't have it. Yeah, it's getting power and we know it works. It just, it just doesn't work with this. It just doesn't work. No, I don't, I don't know how to get it to work. It just doesn't want to work. I can try resetting the yellow box. We can do that, but we're going to... Do you use Camlink Broadcaster for Android? Is that a phone app? I can try that. I'm going to reset the yellow box. On a bike, but... Taking photos, Wi-Fi enabled, send that JPEG up somewhere, post it in the stream. If anyone has any idea or any streamer who's done this before, let me know. Because i not trying to be the first, but I don't think I've seen it yet, so I'd like to be the first. <laughs> Anyways, that's my idea. What's up? Fuck you, dick, suck it in. Yeah, that's that energy. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Tell me. Don't waste your time on that, dude. He's just. Yeah. Just brush it off, dude. It's New York City. Here's the menus for what oh. they have. You can take a okay. copy of each one. Oh, I, I don't, I just want to make sure. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. tree and I thought to myself oh I've never seen a New Mexican woman woman before looking forward to it and when I got into New Mexico I quickly quickly realized there's very little trees <laughs> that fucker got me fucking grandpa papa coming out of this hairpin, it's insane. Oh my God, oh my God! One, two, three, down, one guy's, one, he's, I think he's all right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Pulling the bike. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to clip this in here. Pause. Oh, my salmon, Minnesota salmon, fresh out of the water. 
Howdy. Jojo has cheered X100. All cops are bonus. Oh, he got him! He got him! You got him! That's fucked! That was good timing! Hello? It's not looking good, chat. Nope. Nothing that you looked up, Mr. I don't know what video you saw of someone using a capture card or whatever. Um, it's not working. It ain't working, which is, which is all right. So I have this other one. It's a StarTech. Um, the cam link is like the, the top dog, though. So if the cam link doesn't work, I don't know how the hell this is supposed to work. But I'll plug it in anyways. Use a bigger camera? OK, I'll use this one then. This one doesn't have the same GoPro frustrations. All right, turned it on. Nothing. Just doesn't read it, dude. Doesn't read it. No one's taking the I-15 to Vegas. You might have missed when I was talking about it. No, not taking the, not taking the highway, man. What about the iPhone one, though? What's the goal here? The goal here is tr just seeing if I can use a camera that is not a webcam for the car cam, which isn't a huge deal, honestly. Don't really need the, you know, using this in the car is fine. I might be able to even ask somebody if they have a webcam um, in LA. Why are you regretting you uh, buying the GoPro, dude? I think you made a good choice. 
the new the new GoPro the new GoPro is going to be good in my I think um, for the 10 bit color alone I would buy it for the 10 bit color alone You dig? You understand what I'm saying down there, huh? You understand? Have I tried running the ATEM into the USB input of the new box? No, um, there's not really a reason why I'd want to do that. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I can, I can try that, but I don't, under, I don't know why I would want to do that. And then swap the inputs around, I guess. The problem with this is I lose my audio control because this doesn't have audio mixing capabilities. Let's see. Take the output here. And the output of this and give us. So it's it's in the USB now, so it works. Um, I guess it would work. It's just when I go to audio here, let me see. Yeah. I just don't I can't mix the USB audio at all from the YOLO box. But this is a way. Thank you for pointing that out, Matthew. Um, this is a way to do it. And here is what it looks like with picture in picture with the GoPro. Well, I can do double GoPro now. Where's the other one? Here it is. Let's see. Then I can get rid of all the webcam altogether. Okay, I see. I see why now, Matthew B. Thank you. Was this on? There we go. Okay. Piece of shit. Fucking hate the GoPro so much when you have to plug it in through here. Motherfucker, dude, stop. You know what I'm, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do this. Put you guys to this screen, yep. And then I can see what I'm doing. Ha ha. Okay, so now I have two GoPros. This one has horizon stabilization on it, watch this. We'll make this one the main one, and this one next. There we go. All right, so check it out. Now you can see what the stabilization of this camera does. Watch, watch my hand, and then watch that. See this picture? This is this camera. Look at this. Look at that shit. The fucking horizon stable is so sick. <laughs> Obviously the colors are different again because the exposures are different. The lenses are different. Um, but this is, uh, Matthew B has, this is a solution. Um, and then I don't have to use that webcam. I can use something else. The question is what?
what camera do I use? <laughs> And then this still allows me, if I have an issue and the YOLO box is giving me fucking complications, I can still output from the YOLO box, so the YOLO box isn't doing any streaming, and I can output the HDMI into the live view. Just like that. Uh, by the way, I have two GoPros. I'm not rich in GoPros. Um, every year, when the new GoPro comes out, I consider it since, at least since COVID, when I would begin doing, you know, 90% of my time and income comes from content now. Um, it's my job to buy the GoPros now, so I always buy two. So every year I have to spend pretty much close to $1,000 on fucking GoPros. <laughs> I'm glad that I haven't jumped ship and tried like the Action 3 or the, you know, the Os the DJI cameras either. Because if I was doing that, I would be, I'd be more bro broke than that, you know what I mean? Hell yeah, thank you for that. So everyone give it up for Matthew B. He gave, he has a solution here which is a very, which was a very simple, elegant solution of uh, using the uh, USB out. Thank you, that worked great. Happy with it. This, that, this, this and that, <laughs> that and this is, uh, that is a, um, a reason why I enjoy doing these uh, live stream test live because we got some smart motherfuckers in here like Matthew B also not you don't have to be smart you know some of you um, you know it's hard to troubleshoot or have ideas when you don't know exactly what I'm doing but um, sometimes having an outside look at things helps uh, someone troubleshoot so I appreciate that <clears throat> you have a GoPro 9 and an extra set of roads to so hit me up. I understand the risk of them on the... Uh, Matt, dude, Matthew B, I will fucking hate... No, dude. I don't want to lose your roads, man. <laughs> Yo, Matthew B, I'll give you... <laughs> I'll trade you these ones. I bet you I can get... I bet you I can call road or email them and tell them that this one doesn't work anymore. It's just such a process. But I'll let you have these ones until I come back with yours. How about that? It's weird because it only, it's definitely the, uh, the connection here, the 3.5, because I use these. I have the cable, it's USB-C, and I plug it directly into my phone. And when it's USB-C into my phone, both channels and both mics, they work fine in my phone. It's just when you, whenever you use the uh, 3.5, it doesn't work, so. No, I don't think they just sell the receiver. You have to buy the whole set, unfortunately. Um, I'm an idiot. One time I thought you couldn't repair them, but you can. You can repair the roads. I'm an idiot. I repaired them uh, before I went on tour. That was my fix. Yeah, you can relink them. You, you can't just buy the receiver, though. Not that I've found. I'd rather get, have them give me a new receiver, you know? <laughs> they owe it to me, dude. Oh yeah, the phone batteries will extend the transmitters. It's the receivers that run out of batteries usually first. In, in my opinion, in my testing going, riding across the country. 
Um, and the problem is, see you just lost me there. The problem is if I was to plug this into power, you'll hear a ringing, a crazy gnarly sound. I've done it before. I've done it more than once. And you guys freak out. <laughs> um, so my idea is I'll have three If I can just do two riders, it would be sick, and one rider is not mic'd, but I need, I basically need, um, I need four sets of Rode Wireless Go's to make this thing happen properly, because I need one for each rider, and, and then a, a single one. I, I, I could wear the single one, but what I was gonna do was use in-car camera audio does that make sense? Like, I'll show you, like, I can just use the mic on the GoPro. Um, oh wait, what audio are we hearing right now? We are, we're hearing, where's my, where's my headphones? We did an audio swap, damn it. Yeah, we are on this camera's audio right now. Now I'm gonna switch. Now we are on the road. So what I can do is, I can't do that. I don't think I can do both. That's the problem. I can't do I can't do USB and HDMI auto at the same time. That's the one downside to this whole setup. Like if I try to turn it on right now, it says, sorry, audio mixing is not supported for USB A and type C ports currently. One thing I forgot to mention that's super sick about Yolobox is they change their damn software all the time. Oh no, we're gonna, I'm gonna run mics into the YOLO for sure. What I'm gonna do, uh, Matthew B, the workaround is, um, I'm gonna have two mics going into the YOLO box and the workaround is I take one of the cameras and turn the audio on and I have another road into that. I just wanted a hard, I just wanted like a shotgun mic or something in the car, you know what I mean? which is still something I can do. Man, this is really making me rethink everything. Fuck. Because <sighs> I need both inputs on the A10 Mini for the three riders. Make sense? Or maybe I just do AFV, audio follow video, The noise when you plugged USB power into an audio device is a ground loop. You can use a galvanic isolator to avoid it. Oh yeah, I'm gonna draw a map of all this, dude. <laughs> and I'm gonna label my switching buttons as well in my audio channels. Um, what the hell? Dude, I was, I took electronic principles so long ago. I don't, cyberspace, thank you for that. Galvanic. Need a galvanic isolator. Galvanic isolator for um, three, no, 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 it's a USB C. So if you got a galvanic isolated USB cable, huh? Oh, it's got a little box on there. Oh my God, they're expensive. Sheesh. Oh, there's a cheaper one.
USB ground, it's basically a USB ground loop, right? Upgrade to a cargo bike with full mobile trans, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the idea um, for sure. So USB ground loop isolator, yeah. I could find something on Amazon probably. So all it is is just like a dongle, another dongle. Oh, or you can get these ones right here. No. So would I put it on the 3.5 millimeter jack or would I put it on the USB-C power going in? It cleans the power. <laughs> We need more cameras. Yeah, USB-C. So I'm only seeing USB-A's, but I can do USB-A. So from the power pack out of the USB-A and then USB-C to the thing. I think that would be the way to do it. How do you know if it's good or not? You just read the reviews or what? Some of them are expensive, man. And then there's some cheap ass ones. It's hard to tell which is which. I mean, this will save me because I can leave it charged, like plugged in the whole time. And I don't have to do an audio swap. Because there's, if I just have a, a switch of sets, it would be good to go. Or maybe one of the concept writers just doesn't ever get a mic. You know what I mean? That's also a thing. Like three people, I want you to be able to hear them, but you don't need to hear them necessarily when I'm... Yeah. When, when, so say like this camera here is in the car right now, right? I can't think about how to do this. It's like blowing, it's blowing me away. That's right. So this one never gets audio ever. This one never gets audio. That's what it is. Can you rig up a boom mic? <laughs> yeah, that would, uh, in my, ex my years of experience of filming cycling, um, no. Um, shotgun mics are not the way, boom mics are not the way. Um, there's just too much wind. It's also too narrow. It's nice to have some, some like spread of sound especially when cars and stuff fly by. But um, yeah, I've tried shotgun mics and I've tried something similar to a boom long, long ago on a monster track video. And it didn't work out very well. It, it worked out better than using the GoPro audio for sure, but it didn't work that well. <laughs> you was joking, dude. I can't tell through the chat, bro. Damn. <laughs> Look at how muddy the shot. This shot is great. This one over here is so fucking muddy. Um, and then, uh, so here's the second test that I didn't know works. So the Yolo box, the battery says 0% right now. It's completely dead. It's running solely off power. I didn't know that it does that. I thought it would have turned off by now. I might jinx it, it might break now, who knows.
So yeah, after after this, I'm going to uh, sketch something out. I gotta fi I gotta get all the cables together. I should take a picture of all this. Smile chat. I'm sending this over to uh, over to the uh, client. Also, do you know anyone in LA with an e-bike? Were, I can't spell. More cameras? Dude, I know. I don't know. What do we got? One is for wireless camera. And then, oh my god, we only have one camera plugged in right now. We have so much room for more chat. What we need is a really long HDMI cable and I can put one in the studio right now, like over here. And I forgot to mention, I fixed the problem. Um, remember when I was streaming with the Yolo box and you guys were like, it looks soft, it looks muddy, it doesn't look as sharp, blah, 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 blah. I agreed with you guys, it doesn't. Um, the reason was, <laughs> it was my fault, of course it always is. Uh, there's, a, there's a bit rate, let me see if I can find it. So there's an encoding setting and it was set at a max of 3000. So it wasn't pushing out enough. It was capped at its bit rate. So I went to the max, which is eight. So now we're at 8,000 and it actually goes past it. We're at 8,051 bits a second right now. So, so the Yolo box, what can I say, man? I love it. You guys, I like this thing. I like this thing. <laughs> Should we give the mic to, to Eric? I don't know what he's doing in there, but maybe he can talk to you. I gotta go give this uh, box to my studio mate, Maya. Are you even there anymore, chat? Or did you guys leave? Everyone left, huh? Be the Amazon guy. Oh, no. ah. Lord of the Rings. So what do we do? Okay. Just talking. Just chatting. We're still going. Whole new setup yeah, in here. Let's go. So I got both GoPros working through the USB. Oh gosh. I got it, it kind of working now. Wait, what? Oh, so this is a PIP. With so this is, the, this is HDMI, and then this whole thing is running through the USB now. Does that make any sense? Because this has a USB out as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's like really, uh, it's, it's, doing, it's doing a lot. What was okay. that? The, the <laughs> you still have that? Oh, I, I, I just that Wi Fi? Because I used it for. Uh, are you going to go for a bike ride? I was going to get dinner soon. Why? What's up? Were you going to run through a ride up? No, I was, 
I was wondering. I was just wondering. Um, so, can you guys hear me? Is that is that what I'm doing? I'm filling in for Terry. No big deal, right? Anyone can do it. Yeah, right. Uh, cool. Um, is that a straggler? Oh, the bike? Uh, is that a straggler? It's a Surly. A Surly cross bike. My adventure bike. Uh, what is it? A steamroller. Uh, and Terry said he's going to order some dinner. He needs to go on a bike ride. Just say hotline and you're set. Um, but yeah, um, open studio. Shit, I'm sorry. My brain's a little fried. But yeah, I'm, I'm coming off of uh, making some art for the open studio. It was also, I mean, it's also just for myself. And every time I make a big uh, push of work, then it becomes like a marketing sales moment shortly after. I can sort of leverage the new work to reach out to people I have have conversations with ongoingly and just remind them that I exist. Uh, maybe generate some new interest, things like that. So I'm kind of doing, kind of doing that. I was supposed to be doing all sorts of big projects right about now that have been you know, talking to folks during the summer and I don't know, man, the economy is in a weird, weird little stall. Uh, I'm not surprised. So I'm just trying to uh, stay positive, get creative, figure out ways to kind of uh, keep this all going. Nothing new, been through, been through a lot. So, um, did you have your show already? I, I'm maybe, uh, so I, I, the most recent show I had um, uh, was a solo show in San Francisco at a gallery called Heron Arts. And so, and I guess in a way it was, I mean, it was a while back, May, June. And then shortly after that, I went right into like two big mural projects. Um, so that was helpful. Uh, just both as a, a moment to push out a bunch of new work and a moment to like make some money. Um, so if anything, I'm like still like in this weird way pivoting and shifting gears coming out of that, even though it's like summer's over. It's crazy. But uh, Josh, I don't know if you guys met Josh on the stream. He uh, finally hopped on a plane. He stayed. He stayed with me. Well me he stayed at terry's house he stayed at my other friend's house but for the most part i was hosting him for 10 weeks um 10 weeks it's a long time to have a house guest probably the longest i've ever done it um yeah yeah it was it was an sf and that's cool that you remember that um i, I sold i sold some work i don't know it was a good show it was a good show i did like sculptural work, painting work, and I, for the first time, did like video work. I was trying to kind of go down that NFT route, doing some digital assets that people could purchase. Uh, and I'm now officially uh, like represented by that gallery, Heron Arts in San Francisco. So they kind of handle all the uh, SF and greater Bay Area um, sales and commissions, which is really great. I've been kind of been wanting to do that for a while. Um, but I live out here, New York, and I'm trying to get that going out here. Also, I just went back to San Francisco to relocate my studio. Um, it's actually kind of an interim, um, it's, I guess, AKA storage, but I just had a phone call with a friend yesterday. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people from my old studio building that are all moving out because the building is up for sale. Uh, have found another big building in downtown SF that looks very, very promising. So it might actually end up being like this really cool upgrade. Um, you know, for when I do go back to SF for projects, I'll, I'll have, I'll still have an operating studio, which is great. Um, yeah. But um, I don't know. I think the next, the next trip for me is actually. Well, next next project is 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 putting together some promo kits. Um, I, it's it's all underneath the table, so it's kind of hard to 
show it to you all, but I don't know, they, each kit will, it's basically, I make these like um, promotional gifts and I make like a really limited amount. They're not really for sale. Um, so it's, it's just like my own investment to uh, reach out to, to those I've worked with before as a thank you and those I would love to work with in the future as an introduction. Um, so they'll have like these foil stamp little postcards and I'll write a little handwritten note on the back. QR code takes them to a particular point on the website that I'm gonna build out. And then what's really special is they're gonna get these little box, uh, wait, which camera? Little box of, like a match box, sorry, match box. Um, again, foil stamp. And the big, the big, big thing <coughs> is I'm going, I just started making um, uh, molds for the first time, cement molds. So you make, so here's the mold. This is um, uh, silicon. It's like art making mold. It's pretty, pretty basic stuff. You add part A to part B, 50-50, and then um, you know I I, I uh, created a I call it a plaster master. So this is the master that I poured the mold goo goop <laughs> around, and then essentially you know you pull this out, and then you can pour uh, um, any kind of material into this, preferably something that hardens quickly. And I'm going to pour um, uh, a mixture of cement with a little bit of like pigment for color and throw in some sparkly shit, some crystals type stuff. It's, it's going to look pretty cool. Um, and it's, you know, hopefully going to speak to my work. It's just like a textural surface it's going to look more more or less like this shape um, and then this candle uh, or this vessel this glass vessel is going to sit in it and it'll sit like nice and pretty on your desk or table at home and um, i'm going to pour wax into this create a little custom scent sprinkle some other good goodness that will kind of sparkle when it's lit up and I, don't know, I think it should be kind of like kind of vigil like kind of just comforting um it's you know a play of different materials it's just something i've never done before and it's freak man i've been like trying to do this project since the start of the year it's it's it just it kind of grew and grew to be this really big thing um and uh, yeah, I just know that once people receive the little box with all the special packaging and open it up uh, along with my little handwritten note and follow up the phone call or an email, preferably meet them in person, just start to have some really engaging conversations that could um, kind of set me up for 2023. And that's, that's kind of where I'm at. That's the next big project um, uh, or the next bit, uh, like, yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of things I'm always doing, but this is like, the next physical big project <clears throat> um, and it's cool it's also doubling like I've always wanted to get into mold making so um, <laughs> right on yeah not no resin um, I don't really work with resin uh, resins like super volatile I know it's like kind of a um, popular stuff I, I for my texture mixes which are mostly cement sand and uh, other like small granule textures. I, I use this like water-based version of resin. I call it ghetto resin or the poor man's resin. But it's just easier to clean up. It doesn't destroy everything it touches. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm like a little conscious about the environment sometimes that it holds me up on like what materials I use, but I do use spray paint. Um, resin can cause cancer. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it's always experimenting. And I'm, I'm gonna be heading to Texas as far as my next trip. Uh, I will be in the Austin area helping, helping my family out. Parents are moving again, uh, help with my brother and the kids. And I hope to get out and about in the Austin area. Uh, everyone's trying to get me to move there, which I don't plan on moving there anytime soon, but Depending on parents' health, we'll see how that goes. Uh, so right now I'm just trying to be 
as available to them as I can. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess I could show um, a couple of my favorite pieces from from the recent little set of work. They're all they're all like I made like ten small pieces, sixteen by twenty, kind of like the size of the piece behind. And I, I I often before I you know fully dedicate my time, energy, and wallet to like making a big body of work. I, I like to I mean it makes perfect sense. Almost like it's my, my sketch work, I'll make a bunch of smaller pieces and just experiment with different color combinations and different different materials, like layering them differently, like how I mix them, how I spread it, um, and whatever paints I add to it. It's all like subtle shit, but each each time I'm doing a piece, like I'm, I'm always tweaking it a little bit differently, um, just becoming more and more familiar with the, the materials uh, and then, you know, fucking around with different colors and, and really trying to create pieces that have like an experience like they have either like reflective metallic paints in them so that when you uh, look at them in different lighting whether like your house lights or sunlight or ambient light of sorts it just feels different throughout the day um, I've always found that kind of fascinating and um, you know I as you know I work a lot with neon and, and neon's great and all but it, it's expensive which is not the worst, um, but it's really difficult to ship. And shipping right now is, that's where you lose money. It's like so silly to ship anything. And in order to ship the neon, it requires like a tremendous amount of packaging. And all of those pieces of the puzzle to come together is, is just, it's just, everything's more complicated and expensive for now, hopefully not forever, but I don't know. So I just don't want to like get so stuck on just like, I do neon but, uh, and try other things as well. Let me go grab a piece. <clears throat> it's hard to pick a favorite, um, but uh, this, this was one of the first ones of the set. Um, that I created. Uh, it's interesting with the, the double view, you can kind of get two and one. But uh, because of the uh, the textural surface uh, and the like, the hit of spray paint, depending on the angle in which you see the piece, it's like you know, obviously a little bit more purple or more red. Uh, and these two colors, like, just so dramatic for me. I don't know, I got really into, like, purples and pinks recently. It's, it's kind of a dedication um, to a family member. And, I don't know, it's just, like, it's really rich and really royal and almost, like, I don't know, just really drawn to it. But this, this effect I have never done before. Um, it's basically a color-changing film that I purchased, or actually no, it was like, all this is like leftover bits. So the idea was also to make work without buying anything new. So it was leftover bits from an old installation that I grabbed when I was back in San Francisco. And um, it's kind of like fragile. Uh, so I, instead of trying to make it perfect, I was like, let me just crinkle it up, um, like crinkle it up into a small ball and see how that looks. And it was more interesting how it catches, catches light and then like seal that off behind a, um, like a translucent pink um, plexiglass. So even though the surface is texture under there, like the top side is smooth and then it has like a different type of light reflection. Um, but yeah, and, and the surface is, this one's not so wild. It's, um, this is a, it's a, a sa sand and cement mixture. The sand just helps the cement bind a little bit better along with PVA glue. That's, that's my poor man's adhesive. I buy it by the gallons. Uh, what's your website? So I'm, yeah, website's up, sick fade, thank you. And like, uh, yeah, like a Martian rock wall. I'm like been really, I, I travel a lot, or I was traveling a lot to Mexico, uh, both Mexico City and just like the greater country. And I don't know, man, it's like the, the textures out there are just unreal. And, and it, it just like at a certain point, what I was painting and what I was like really being drawn to just weren't lining up. And I remember 
you know, coming back to the studio after a trip, like wanting to figure out, like through the little photos on my phone, like how can I recreate this, like, I don't know, 500 year old texture. And it was just something interesting and like the whole, like, it's, it's, it's actually quite difficult to control. And I, I think that's another part I like about it. I'm, I'm, it's not like, look how pretty I can paint something. I'm, I'm just more or less understanding the, the ratios. And then I, I use different tools to spread the mixture. So I know if I do something thicker, it'll crack more versus thinner, it'll crack less. Uh, and I want the crack, I actually make the ratios so that they do separate like right before they harden. Um, but there is this, there is this um, magic to it, I guess, where you lay the mixture down and even the colors are a little bit off once you start adding um, cement and sand to it. Um, but like, you know, you leave, you go home for the night, you come back the next day and there's this like, ooh, wow, like that's what it ended up becoming, um, sort of unpredictability and just like a real more like let, letting the materials do the talking. It's like a bit more natural. Um, yeah, very different from my canvas work, but yeah, I guess these are all just about like surface and, and light is what it is. So he has to crack. Um, the, all, all of this work is for sale for sure. Um, I think I decided with $800 for these guys. Uh, I, I generally sell my work for much more than that, but you know, price to sell. I'm actually going to throw these, they're, you know, Blah. There, I'm going to throw them up on my website for immediate purchase. That way folks can use their credit card, whatnot. Um, and like I said, there's, there's 10 of them we in total. We trapped them, chat. Yeah. I want to show one more piece. Yeah, um, keep going. Something different. <clears throat> uh, man, it's hard to decide. Let me do like a real quick. No. Yeah, we did. I wonder if this will pick up on film. Uh, that was Josh. There was way more beer in the fridge when I left. That was it. I was like, holy shit. Remember he had like two visitors? I think they were like slamming beers. Cause I only had one before we even, eventually rolled out. I was just out. editing so hard yesterday. I didn't even, you I were didn't in the zone. see the people. I right. saw them like, and I was just like, I'm not. And you saw me, I was just talking. I was break. on the phone for like four hours straight. <laughs> it was, it was like, that kind of wore me out. I forgot how much phone conversations can be very tiring. Um, 800 is a steal. That's what's up. Um, this, what's up, what's up? Huh, this one? I don't know. I wanted to show this one because, you know, normally, like, I'm, like, trying to make the, um, the plexiglass, like, be, like, absolutely perfect. And, I don't know, I just kind of let loose and took... Oh, it switched, Terry. Yeah, yeah, it switches. Oh, okay. Sorry. Here, I'll, I'll put it's, it back. So you... It's okay. I just didn't know. I think it's a one minute switch. So I took, like, a... It's, a, it's mirrored chrome, like a black-gray chrome sheet of plexiglass and I had a few scraps left of it from again at some other installation I did and because I had just scraps of it I just felt more um, brave with like you can't really fuck it up like so I, I scratched into it I even took a sander a power sander behind it so that it's not perfectly mirrored if you will and then a new texture idea was like how to make the surface basically look like it's metal like metallic so i added silver paint to cement and then i threw in other um metallic pigments they're all called different things but it's all like dry powder pigment that you throw in while everything's wet and you mix it around and it just creates different sparkle and then to like one step further like hit it from the side with um some uh chrome spray paint so it's pretty minimal, less colorful, um, more about the, the mirror. Look, you can see yourself. Where are you guys at? Where are you at? Yeah. But um, yeah, I was real curious if this one, this one doesn't show up on photo very much, but um, so, oh, upside down. So the film, so there's correctional tape for the lines, like whiteout tape 
on a roller. I'm sure you've seen those like at Office Max. I buy it by the 20 pack. And we're trying to get sponsored by Bic. What up? Um, but this, this is like two layers of, of texture mix. One was I just added paint to like powdered marble. It's kind of like if you were to make paint from scratch, it's a, it's a common base. Um, but when you add too much of it, 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 uh, it starts to do that cracking thing that I like. Um, the top layer is sand, paint, and PVA glue. But over the correctional tape, I added this, this type of film. I call it magic film. I mean, I call them all magic film, but it's basically, okay. At an angle, at an angle, the, the lines will blur. See, the camera likes to focus. It likes to figure it out. Oh no, straight on it blurs. There it is. Straight on it blurs. Stop moving, camera. Um, and then at an angle, the lines come into focus. Does that make sense? So when you're look at it, looking at it straight, they're a little fuzzy. And then when you turn it, they come into focus. And it's just like a little illusion, like trick your eye, make it more of a, a piece that you want to see from every angle. Um, I like, oh, it looks like a tree. Yeah, it does look very tree-like in this one. Like a big old, like, redwood. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, what else? Maybe one more? Are you guys into this? One more? Even four? And then I'll be done. Uh, I just posted this one today on my Instagram. It's kind of like the same combination of materials as that silver one we looked at. So, and, but in this case, the, um, the mirror is a purple, purple chrome mirrored out. And I like dusted it with this spray paint and spray paint kind of does like funny shit on plexiglass because of static. And I liked that look. Uh, and then the other, like basically laid a piece of wood down to create like a, um, a stopper to then do a really thick textural mix uh, of cement and sand. Once again, manipulated it with a, like a moppy type paintbrush to give it kind of like motion and some really deep grooves. And then laid down a little stencil as this used throughout the work uh, to do a little bit of like overspray action uh, and some color changing kind of type effect, so. Yeah, Total Recall. Yeah, this it's kind of has like an 80s sci-fi color palette. Um, yeah. Who is this Terry Benson dude? Yeah, who the fuck is this Who guy? is this guy? How did this guy get on here? We're, it says Terry's chatting. Uh, but yeah, thanks, guys. Um, cheers, Matthew B. Um, but yeah, thanks, guys, for listening and caring. <laughs> um, hopefully it was as fun for you as it was for me. I showed him the, the promo kit. When does that drop? Um, fuck man, as soon as I actually start pouring the cement, it'll probably take another two weeks to pour all the molds. So before the end of the year is the idea. Before the holidays, before the holiday rush. Oh. Yeah, so I guess end of October. You got it all planned out and shit. Dude, I think it's going to work out better this way. Like if I was trying to get them out pre-summer and I don't think that would have hit as good as it will hit if I do it now. Yeah. Um, but who knows? It'll all be great once I get to it. But anything else? T Terry, I don't know. Yeah, what you got? I did some show and tell. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Uh, what about how many people we got here? Where, where's uh? Oh, Bobby texted you. Um, is it 
is it corny to ask like where's it where's everybody from i'm always really curious like time zones and locations uh, where everyone's tuning in from um so if you're if you got the audio on and you heard me just type what city you're in chicago sick domino park by williamsburg it's a fucking liar atl Oh wait, no, that's Sebastian. He does live there. Oh really? Oh yeah, Sebastian <laughs> Dorian. Sick. Fucking oh the liar. Ne oh, wait, the Netherlands. <laughs> that's what's up. Got a lot of uh, Georgians and Illinoisans. DC. That's cool. That's cool. Like East Coast. We got two. So how often do you guys buy art? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next question. What's your bank account looking like? Nah, just kidding. I don't really like. It's it's funny. I like to make the work. I don't really like to sell the work. I let other people do that, or I let the work do that itself. Which sounds stupid. Um, I'm trying to learn how to make it fun, because um, there's a lot of people out there who who want to buy my work, um, who are who are able to afford it. Like, I can't even afford my art if I had to buy it. So, like, let's just put that out there. But, um, I don't know, I'm just trying to get better at just having casual conversations with people, understanding why it is they like my work or a specific piece, and and just sort of, like, helping, helping that along uh, to, like, allow them to support me and allow them to invest in something they believe in. It's, it's all really cool. Um, and normally, again, like people do it for me, but uh, I've also done it a lot for myself. But shouts out to anybody uh, pursuing an independent career of any kind or a creative career of any kind. It's it's not easy. There's no real roadmap. <clears throat> um, yeah, and yeah, gallery forty to sixty. Like it's almost like globally, galleries take. A a pretty big cut you know and like the gallery I work with in San Francisco Heron Arts they do a fair amount of um, advertising reach marketing they I mean obviously they got to cover the rent the employees and keep the lights on um, but they also have like a database of just collectors and they know their collectors really well because they've sold to them for many many years and they know what people like and don't like and just so, more or less they have a lot more info than I'd like to you know care about um, and um, I don't know and some and some collectors it's different for everybody some people don't really like talking directly to the artists like sure if it's like talking about the materials and the creative and why you make the work but once it comes transactional they prefer to talk to a professional that is gonna swipe the card but I don't know it's case by case I've worked with a lot of different galleries some good some bad some of them I feel deserve every bit of their commission um, and, and, and some not so much, so you kind of have to kind of feel it out. The best thing to do is if you have a shitty relationship is move on from it as quickly as possible and find the right person for you. Um, but I work a lot even with like independent consultants and advisors, curators, just people that are positioning my work into the hands of companies or people. Uh, so it's like it's kind of like outside of the gallery and so I can make a bit, uh, a lot of work and not have to worry about um, showing it in a gallery setting. Just take really good photos, pitch them like a PDF of the latest works, and then they go on to pitch that to whoever it is within their social circle. And it all kind of works out. Um, well, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't envy anyone doing the marketing, the marketing part. Just yeah uh nowadays it's like the art world has changed a lot since you know the day you know you take art history and you hear about like the i call it just the fantasy you know you slave away in your studio and some affluent person comes along and discovers you and boom you're famous like the, those days have been been over long long ago and there is a bit of just you know good and bad thanks though to social media you can be your own little uh, marketer, you know, and, and sort of hustle your own um, fan base, turn collector base. Uh, <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, Terry looks different today. But, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know how to answer that. But, you know, I try to find, I wear all the hats to my company and I tend to just make sure I keep a balance on both like art creation and uh, the business of it on the back end. And um, I don't know, I, tr I try to find like little games or the, the fun creative stuff to do even within the business side. Um, and, and I don't know if you just really believe about what you're doing and you feel like, you know, people like feel good about having their work in your lives and like, I don't know, all these things like it's all, it's, I'm always going back to the source of why I do what I do and it, it's, it helps me kind of get through a rut uh, and motivate me to like want to reach out and connect to people and, and um, share my work, you know, so it, it can become kind of natural. Um, I didn't watch that movie, um, but um, yeah, guys, appreciate y'all telling me where you're from. It's really cool. I, I would love to go to specifically uh, Denmark. Uh, I've flown through it. Um, was it Oslo? Is that Denmark? When I was coming back from Tokyo, it was like this long, horrible layover flight. And all I did was leave the airport and take a big gulp of Copenhagen air, Denmark air. And it felt fresh and nice. <laughs> but uh, yeah, should Eric start streaming? Yeah, dude, no, he's soft. No, I'm too soft for this. Santiago, Chile, awesome. Yeah. Where should Terry go next on his bike adventures? Yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm Terry's studio mate and friend first. Um, he's in the other room, y'all, I'm not Terry, but um, feel free to boot me off. He's, he'll be back in a second. Oslo's in Norway, okay, gosh. Let's see, that's how horrible I am with knowing places. Um, thank you for correcting. Terry should go to Tokyo. Terry. Oh, he's there. I asked them where you should go next on your bike adventures. Korea just came up. We, we, yeah, I feel like I've talked about Korea with Terry. And he's been to Japan a few times. J Japan would be amazing. I've only gone once. I had the craziest, lit, uh, what do you call it, jet lag after that trip turned I don't know, it was, I was a mess, but would I go back? Hell yeah. Um, yeah, he lit, oh, Terry lived in Korea. For, I'm like, wait, that's Terry, stop yelling. <clears throat> All right, Terry, I, I uh, feel like I'm mumbling. Well, they were kind of asking some questions, and, uh... <coughs> <coughs> so, hello. Hi. So, if you guys are just joining, hello. If you're just joining, we're testing, uh this crazy uh, system here. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna, trying to get it working. <clears throat> How much is a peak? What's that, Warcraft? <clears throat> ah, ah, it's not that loud actually. Woo, hey, ah, 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 ah. Ah, there we go. Turned it down a little bit. Ooh, we are dropping frames. 21 frames a second. Oh, there we go. 10 megs a second. Wow. Yeah, so... Uh, we were testing all of this equipment here, and... Uh, we got it working, dude. We got a 24 hour stream coming. I'm gonna turn this camera switching thing off. There we go. 
We got a 24 hour stream coming, so that's why I was doing this. We got the picture in picture. I can switch to this camera here, I can go to this one here, or this one here, or this one here, or this one here, or this one here. And this is all battery operated, the whole thing. Those of you who are just coming in, I'll give you a quick little view of uh, what's going on here. I'll use, uh, I guess I'll use this camera. Hopefully it doesn't come unplugged, but uh, so here we go. I got the Yolo Box Mini here. I got an A10 Mini running on battery. I got, you know, a GoPro 10 over there. Got a GoPro 10 here. Here we have, oh, wrong way. Here we have, uh, you know, we can do picture in picture. What the hell? That's not picture in picture, Terry. What happened there? Why is that one not picture in picture? Oh, it is picture in picture. Ha! Ha ha ha! Uh, we can do picture in picture here. We can do the HDMI that's just right here. We can do the USB, which is actually coming out of the A10 Mini. Um, and we have audio, two channels. The reason why we're doing this is because, put this back, there we go, because we are going to Los Angeles to film a fastest known time from Los Angeles to Las Vegas on a bicycle. The concept team is doing it. And we are going to follow them via, possibly via bicycle. Might change that up, we'll see. Um, only reason why I'm saying this is because there's um, possibility we might do something different because it's gonna be late, it's gonna be nighttime. There's not a lot of light. Um, what else? A lot of my viewership isn't on when we're gonna start. Most of the viewers are gonna come on in the morning when we're already, you know, eight hours or more into the ride. So that is the reason why. Um, anyways, still working that out. I still need to uh, think about it. Um, but we got a wireless camera set up. We have, a, we have the backpack set up and we have all this stuff running into the Yolo box, the A10 Mini, and I also have a um, uh, a Live View Solo as a backup, possible main streaming device. We'll see how that works. Um, so that's why we're doing this. Thank you for joining. Hopefully, uh, you guys found this educational. Did I see the new Osmo release today? Uh, yeah, I saw the Osmo release. I saw the GoPro release, the Osmo release, and, and the uh, Insta360 X3 release uh, a couple weeks ago as well, which I'm also impressed with that camera. Um, well, hair's looking like shit, man. Anyways. Eric's... Eric's over here doing the trash behind me, dude. Favorite night. It's Wednesday night. When Eric's doing the trash, it means it's Wednesday night. <laughs> I wake up thinking about this. Um, yes, so they're leaving. It's going to be on Sunday night. Sunday night's going to be the night. You think you can get the Osmo 3 to work for live streaming? Uh, possibly. I'm not very excited with the picture out of the Osmo 3, personally. It's got pretty good low light, but uh, from what I've seen, I don't like the picture. I prefer the GoPro. Yeah, so back to, back to the, back to the 24-hour live stream. It's on Sunday. I leave on Friday, so I will be streaming, um, possibly? 
Friday through Friday and Saturday to get, get everyone acquainted with the stream set up and getting everyone on board with what's about to happen. Try to build a little bit of repetition and stream hype before it happens. I don't know. But yeah, it's happening on Sunday. This, this one's looking muddier and muddier. This one doesn't look too bad though. I wonder, I might have the settings on that one set to low. Hmm. I should check it. Let me see. Can fix it right now. I'd like to see it live connected. Let's see. This one says orientation is locked, which means I don't know what that means, honestly. I don't know which camera this is. So there's this one. Oh, and there's, whoa, there's this one. The battery's about to die on it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> All right, so this is definitely the camera then. That's funny that that happened right there. Let's turn this off then. What happened? How did that, I swear I had that plugged in. I guess not. Oh well. Well, now we know which camera is which on the app. Let's see if I can get this to look better on stream while watching. So, right away, resolution's at 5.3. I don't even think it does 5.3 out of the camera. What happened there? <laughs> it didn't like that. It didn't like that. It didn't like that. How did that, what happened there? Hmm. Oh, I also had the exposure at minus one. Let's see. Narrow, boost, bit rate, color natural, blah, 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 blah. Oh, it's at 24 frames a second as well. That's another problem. Hmm. Interesting. I just, <laughs> the camera just is, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> it just won't turn on. That's funny. Oh, look, it's showing up now. It's just a black screen. Let's turn it off and turn it back on. As you got to do these days. I forgot that uh, I'm looking at 
the wrong thing, aren't I? Now I have it. I have it. We're on linear now. Linear setup. Careful, careful. All right, that's about it, chat. I got everything figured out. I just need to work on my um, rest of this. You guys have anything else to say? I'm, or I'm going to leave, dude. Or I'm out of here. What's up, Art Falcon? I think we got it all figured out. Got Eric over here. Sorry. Be quiet. Dude. It's a lot of beer. Score. <laughs> um, let me find somebody, though. Don't leave me yet, chat. Come on now. What about? What about somebody who's on Twitch who doesn't get any viewers? Huh? Someone on Twitch who doesn't get viewers when they're just staring at camera and rewiring stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, but you guys, there's... We got Selson though. Selson, Selson's out here, dude. All right, y'all. Much love. Thanks for working through that with me um, on that test. And I'll see you guys on the next stream coming up soon. I'm really stoked. Thank you for working with me through that troubleshooting. Appreciate it.